Bonjour everyone, welcome to another uh, episode of uh, Diecast Showcase here. Uh, so today I'm going to be um, doing another uh, Playware episode with some uh, older castings uh, in variable condition. Um, and today is going to be a Hot Wheels specific uh, episode. So we're going to be looking at uh, about a dozen um, Hot Wheels main lines from uh, the uh, late 70s all the way up to the early 90s. Um, and uh, I'll uh, start off uh, the showcase uh, right away with a pretty, uh, pretty epic and pretty uh, sought after casting. Uh, so this is a uh, Dixie Challenger. Dixie Dodge Challenger, so a uh, little bit of Mopar action, vintage Mopar. So this specific one is in play-worn condition, as you can obviously see from the paint. We're talking about a um, fairly early release of this casting. Uh, it's not really visible anymore, but the first release uh, did have the Confederate flag on the roof which was later removed for uh, reasons we don't need to really get into, but uh, I think you can understand why. Um, Tampo on the on the hood, though, did survive pretty well. So you've got the 426 Hemi scripture on either side of the Dixie Challenger uh, middle portion of the Tampo in red, white, and blue. Nice uh, orange color there. Maybe go mango, who knows? Hemi orange. Uh, so this is a uh, casting based on the uh, 70, say 70 to 74 Challenger. Um, you can uh, see through the grill here that uh, we've got some remnants of Charger. It seems to be more like a 73, 74 style grill, from what I can tell at least. Uh, this casting was released very early 80s. A little bit before I was born so um, in perfect condition these are quite uh, sought after and if they're carded uh, they, they get really expensive real fast got the black walls with the uh, larger profile tires in the back versus the front it's a, it is a drag setup I'll show you the base so uh, as you can see from the base it, it's definitely an early one so plastic chrome base with the metal body. Can't really see much inside there, but uh, we're looking at a uh, black interior. Nothing uh, phenomenal to see, but uh, very cool casting. Very, uh, very vintage. And the play wear on this thing I find is pretty uh, well dispersed throughout the paint. Uh, you know, it looks vintage. It feels vintage. Um, and it's complete. No cracks on the windows or anything. So pretty cool. Uh, second one I'm going to show you is uh, going to be something that's going to be a few years newer. So a Pontiac Fiero 2M4. So basically the 2M4 stands for two-seater, mid-engine, four-cylinder. Did have a Fiero GT 2M6 that was also offered at the time by Pontiac which had the uh, 2.8 liter V6, putting out a awe-inspiring 130 horsepower. We are talking about early 80s, so let's just say that, uh, yeah, it was what it was. But a uh, very nice casting. I do like this one. Uh, it's got the American flag livery, Fiero Lua scripture, just below the... Uh, Tampoed rear uh, little quarter windows, uh, black interior, you can see the metal base just in front of the driver's seat there, there's metal base, metal body, here's your base, so Hot Wheels, the Hot Ones, Hot Ones referring to the wheels that are on this, gold Hot Ones, good condition, we actually got some side mirrors cast into this which is a big plus. Um, the interior also lends itself to the two little vents here on the rear bumper. 
as well as the rear light bar that covers the full width of the rear. The base does include the uh, mirrored uh, little front vents from the front, so those are going to be metal. And you've got the engine cooling vent on the rear that is also going to be part of the interior. Nice clear sun, well, clear sunroof. It was clear, I'm pretty sure, when it was new, but, uh, you know, what, uh, this was probably released, uh, I mean, this... This is pretty much, I mean, it, if it's not the first version of this car, it's pretty close to it. As you can see, the copyright is 1984. So I'm assuming this is a mid-80s, mid-80s release. So we are talking about best case scenario, a car that's going to be, what, about 40 years old. So all in all, not too bad. Staying in the same collection, and potentially around the same year of release. We're going to go to this one here. Another hot ones, the uh, second gen late Chevrolet Camaro Z28. Um, this is a pretty common model. Uh, this one is in pretty darn good condition for its age. A uh, few flea bites on the rear wheel arch. You know, here and there we've got. Uh, Got maybe a little tiny flea bite on the tempos and everything. Mind you that uh, there is some dust on here a little bit. I didn't attempt to wipe down before, but uh, surprisingly, there's some stuff, especially on this uh, glass portion of the casting, which is actually just black plastic. Doesn't seem to be in There may be an interior, but it's not visible. Um, it's kind of... It's kind of obvious that uh, dust tends to... Uh, stick to this pretty well um yeah so getting back to the casting itself very nice details overall uh you can see that that uh plas black plastic does uh uh form the uh, front grill which is a nice little touch metal body metal base here's your base 1982 license clean base the wheels don't seem to have rolled a whole lot on the track uh, they're not perfect if we're looking at the condition of the uh, the sole of it but uh, yeah rear is pretty uh, plain Jane you do have visible casting details for those uh, rear lights again a couple of few flea bites on the uh, regular areas you would expect them corner of the corner and lip of the spoiler corner the lower corner of the bumpers but overall, um, you know, great condition car. A couple of little specs there. Didn't quite go through the whole paint directly to the metal, but, um, you know, it's not perfect, but, and I would never call it mint, but it is really a very good condition 40 to 45 year old toy car. So, uh, gold, one, gold hot ones again. As you can see on the rear, the side profile of the tire is bigger than the front which I like way more than the actual uh, staggered wheels with the same profile tire, because this is way more realistic, at least in my opinion, you know, say 14 inch or 15 inch all around, and uh, you change the profile of tire to get that big, uh, a big rake in the back. So great little car. Next one we're gonna check out, again, Round, uh, the same collection, I believe. Another GM product. Another Hot Ones in red. Going to be the 80s Cam uh, Corvette. C4 Corvette. Um, this one is in very near mint condition. Aside from a very few little flea bites here and there. So you've got a tiny chip just above my thumb couple little chips here and there this one does feature an opening hood where you can see the uh, 5.7 liter 350 cubic inch v8 the tune port injection cool interior with the two-tone seats red and black you do have a suitcase 
red suitcase in the rear area. The glass, as you can see, is extremely clear and clean. Uh, black top to sim uh, matte black top to simulate uh, the uh, removable targa roof. Cool rear end where the uh, rear lights are actually intruded via the red portion of the interior. Very cool exhaust details, metal on metal cast, uh, same size hot ones in gold, Corvette uh, yellow and black tampo on the side. Here's your base, 82 license, very nice condition car. Mind you, these uh, so far all thrift store finds, which I always love to uh, find and then always love to share. Um, gonna change it up a little bit for the next one I'm going to show you. Um, so this is gonna be similar era car, maybe a, a year or two, bef uh, a year or two before the two last hot ones that I showed you. Um, so this is a. Uh, 36 classic caddy super good condition uh, this would have been uh, 81 license and I mean it's probably gonna be a mid 80s version early to mid 80s version so it's pretty clean uh, you got the uh, nice uh, basic wheels white wall um, windscreen is there both lights are there Metal on metal, nice grill detail, or, yeah, or embossed detail at least. Um, the die cast for the base, uh, as you can see, is a little bit tarnished, but um, overall, I mean, the car is in really good condition. You got plastic fenders on this one. Here's your base. So the fenders here are plastic uh, with a spare tire. The running boards all the way to the rear fenders that include the rear lights. Those are plastic, but the rest is all metal. Tilt it over a little bit. You'll see the steering wheel is actually nicely detailed as opposed to just being like a disc or a stub. Uh, there's a little bit of flashing there on the bottom of the steering wheel. Kind of hard to see, but uh, you know, overall, a nice brown interior. Really like it. Windowed up. Um... So a nice 1930s luxury car where the driver would be exposed, whereas the very rich and wealthy passengers would be enclosed and protected from the elements. So this is a, I love uh, the old uh, 30s cars where there was no real, you know, no real line of direction if we're talking about, you know, how they'd be styled and everything like that. So All right, next one. Next one, we're gonna be stepping a couple years back in time if we're talking about the release uh, of the model. And this is a uh, early 80s, once more, vehicle. This is the Stutz Blackhawk. Uh, so part of the uh, neo-retro cars, uh, such as the Excalibur, um, the uh, these kind of cars basically that uh, Take styling cues from older, uh, older decade cars and put them onto the uh, newer, newer chassis. Now this car specifically, I'm not exactly sure what they took it as a basis to make it. Uh, Stutz uh, Motor Company, back in the uh, late '70s, early '80s, but um, it could have been something like looking at the roof line there. Could have been like a Cadillac Eldorado with the late 70s, early 80s. Maybe uh, the uh, rebadged version of the Eldorado, the Riviera from Buick. I mean, could be maybe early G-Body. Potentially maybe Ford Thunderbird. And they're really not sure. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember. But this, this is really, uh, you know literally screams uh, the era i find that the pinstriping work on the uh, metallic brown paint is definitely a paint scheme that is of the era as well you've got the um, visible uh, rear spare 
on the trunk, metal on metal cast, small black wall wheels, black interior, uh, everything's there. Most of the paint is as well, a few chips here and there, but overall not too bad. Here's your base, so 79 copyright on this one. Very uh, different style. We're talking about the overall styling of the car, but uh, you know, it's of its era, as mentioned a couple of times. It's uh, definitely something that uh, is representative of that era of cars. So, next one, we're gonna go, I'm gonna like kind of skip ahead uh, about uh, eight or ten years with a car that. Uh, won't really need to uh, be uh, explained too much. So we've got a Ferrari Testarossa. So Ferrari Testarossa had a flat 12 engine in mid-rear configuration. This specific uh, rendering by Hot Wheels does have the ultra hot wheels. Staggered, larger in the rear, smaller in the front. Got some very late 80s early 90s tampo work on the on the front again a two-tone interior which is really enjoyable black with yellow inserts you can see that the tampo work continues on the roof nice casting details the proportions are fairly right except for the wheel arches uh, in the rear that are really big I do enjoy as well the fact that since we're talking about a two-tone interior we do get a black um, black uh, an insert for the uh, rear light bar that once again does the width of the rear which was something that was a uh, common common styling cue in the uh, in the 80s we've got nice exhaust detail all the ribbing for the uh, engine cover cooling ducts those uh, infamous side vents staked side vents Pretty good condition. You see the most major chipping is on the front driver's side corner. A little bit on the lip and one chip in the middle, but uh, it's better as you go to the other side. Pretty good condition overall. Um, yeah. Here's your base details. Not a whole lot of details on this. Sorry about that. Let's put it on the other side. It'll be better. So, Malaysia cast 1986 copyright and metal on metal it's pure 80s excess next one we're gonna check out going back to the black wall era um, so this was a recent antique store find so Fox body Mustang early Fox body Mustang. Um, this used to have tampos, which you can see slight remnants of. If you look at the, uh, the cowl, it's a little bit of black and red, uh, black and red there. In between also the uh, door, uh, the door panels, the, the body panels. Uh, so yeah, black walls, again, love the fact that we're talking about same size diameter center and tires that are actually of a different diameter, which again makes it more realistic. This casting is fairly interesting. You can see it's got a red interior. Uh, there was some black tampos on the stakes and right behind the, 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 the rear small windows. The part I find interesting is the middle portion of this cast. If you look at here, the rear lights, you can see that there is part of the interior, that is red, that goes ahead and sits behind the actual lenses of the lights, which also form the bumper. Uh, we're talking about smoked uh, glass here. So we've got red behind the smoked rear tail lights, which is really cool. The bumpers and the middle uh, body line or the trim is also it's not super easy to see but it is actually tinted clear just like the front grille and front bumper 
so early fox body which means the four square lights as opposed to the uh, one piece larger ones that came after uh, starting I believe in 86 if I'm not mistaken correct me in the comments if I'm wrong um, yeah so a nice hatchback version of the fox body looks great um, yeah and without the actually it looks good without the tampos pretty cool stuff so yeah a little antique store find that I had to pick up I mean guy was selling uh, them for a dollar each I'll be able to show you another one uh, shortly right after we check out another Mustang here same era uh, if we're talking about uh, licensing uh, but this one is actually part of the Park and Plate series, which uh, in the 80s came um, a little acrylic box. And the top of the box, basically the cover of the box was actually um, a, license, a custom license plate or mim mimics a custom license plate. And uh, the car sat right in there, so for storage and everything. And uh, this was one of them. This would have been like very late 80s release uh, of this original casting with opening hood that was introduced in 83. Uh, so definitely happy because the windshields often go missing on these. The white enamel with red interior looks awesome. White walls are always a big added bonus for me. Love white walls on those basic Hot Wheels wheels used to be a uh, side stripe and a little pony but most of that is gone you can still see some of the mustang scripture a little bit more visible on this side if we're talking about the color but you can't really make out mustang on there anymore so i like the fact that uh, the rear lights are part of the metal base uh metal body metal base here's your base actually speaking of 83 copyright and yeah as you can see in the front grill is part of the uh base as well and adds in you know nice uh desirable contrast cool steering wheel Shifter is almost appropriately sized as well, so I, I find that the interior is very well done on this one, and kind of has to be since it's a convertible. And yeah, you got a little V8 underneath the hood. Not sure if it's a 289 or a, maybe a later 302 swapped into there. Or, I don't know. It does seem to have uh, individual stacks on the heads, but... Uh, Again, kind of hard to tell. So, place the old Mustang next to the not as old Mustang. So, I was mentioning earlier um, uh, the uh, yellow Mustang that I found in the antique store. I picked this up at the same time. So, this is the what they called the Royal Flash, which was the original uh, Lotus Esprit. Jajaro design, wedge shape, very typical of the 70s. Um, this one is on black walls, did have a tampo. You can see very slight remnants of with the Union Jack that was on the hood. Don't have it anymore, obviously, that uh, wore off, but it's for the better in my humble opinion. Nice patina, or play wear on this one. Uh, offset uh, tire size on the... Uh, Standard black walls. Casting details aren't phenomenal, but they're quite acceptable. Uh, we have here uh, the base uh, that does uh, become a license plate insert in the middle of the rear between the two rear lights. There is a plastic portion that's part of the black interior that forms the front and rear bumpers. Front end with the pop-up lights. Um, got some slightly tinted, slightly blue glass. Closed windows on this, as you can see. Got the gas cap on this side, on that uh, C-pillar. 
very good looking car. And I do have the uh, newer versions of this casting in a couple colors. So yellow, black, and green if I'm not mistaken. So I really like this one. Here's your base. Royal Flash. The 78 copyright Hong Kong base. So this is a fairly desirable one. If it was mint, it would be worth its fair share. But uh, it's not, and I prefer it like that. So it's as found condition. No intentions of uh, doing any type of restoration or whatnot on this. So um, I'm going to jump then into uh, something that's a little bit more reminiscent of that Ferrari you see behind. Lamborghini Countach. I believe this is an LP500. It used to be tampoed on the side. Uh, it's only partially tampoed now, as you can see. Again, uh, we've got the Ultra Hots staggered, smaller in the front, bigger in the rear. You can see the rear as you would typically find on these models used in flea markets or thrift stores or antique shops or things like that. Um, the wing is, uh, the two extremities of the wing is are a little bit sagging. Uh, they were much worse when I actually picked this up thrift uh, in a thrift store, but uh, I did bring them a little bit back until paint started cracking on that rear spoiler. So I stopped there uh, trying to readjust. I don't intend to restore this in any way, shape, or form, although a wheel swap would do all the difference. But I'm not really looking to get into that. I'll just show you the base quick, quick. Not a whole lot to see. 87 copyright, but the rear is, it's got really bad fitment. I mean, if you actually pop out the rear, extend the rear wheel to as far as the, um, as far as the uh, axle will allow, it's not too, too bad. But, I mean, these wheels are so sunken in, as you can see in the back here. It's, this is with the other rear wheel completely extended, so it's pretty bad. Same thing in the front. And again, you know, you push out the wheel in the front. It's... Uh, you look like this you push it up just to make sure you don't get the wheel gap it actually looks fairly okay if we're talking about fitment as a whole now obviously yeah, these wheels are love or hate I don't love them uh, I'll admit I'm kind of unable to hate them because being a child of the uh, 80s 90s well these were uh, these were what you got back in the day, so. Slight casting details on the front, not cr a crazy amount of them. Um, top view is really good, though. I really like the top view of this car. Um, you know, paint is not too, too bad, but uh, yeah, tempos are pretty much starting to wear off. And then here you can see basically the better side of it. I think it's LP500S. It could be LP5000S. But, you know, as you saw on the base, it's not even written Lamborghini, let alone Countach. So I don't expect the trim level to be there either. And last uh, last piece I'm going to show you today is going to be uh, something that's slightly different. Again, love or hate, I guess. This is a early 80s release called Mini Trek. The Mini Trek is, you know, obviously a play on words. This would have been a mini truck in a stock form, but becomes a mini trek and uses the camper conversion on the back. So uh, tamples are mostly gone, as you can see. And this is a transitional variation. The original one was a kind of a beige with brown base. Then we have this one that went from beige to white on the top, retaining the brown base, makes it a little bit more rare than the uh, following one, which is white but with the black base. Uh, this is a metal and metal cast. Front end is based on a uh, early 80s to late 70s Toyota pickup. 
which becomes a camper conversion on the back. There are some details in there, but you know, obviously this being at least 40 years old, I think this was 81 or 82 release, so it's legitimately 40 years old. I mean, there's not, there's no chance that these windows will stay completely clear unless it's like carded and hidden from any type of UV damage. But uh, yeah, you got the red interior, a few windows on there to let some uh, sunlight in. And here's your base. Very hard to see the year, copyright year, but it is 81. So see it there next to the Mattel ink right above my thumb. Very tough to see. But yeah, mini trek. So we'll end that here. Um, hopefully you uh, enjoyed the video. Um, if you have any type of feedback, comments, or uh, let me know which one's your favorite, uh, leave it down in the comments. Love getting comments. So, and uh, if you uh, like this video, hit the thumbs up. And uh, to be advised of future uh, future uploads, don't hesitate to subscribe. On that note, I wish you an excellent day and take care. Until the next one, bye bye.